Let me tell you about Russell Kirk and the conservative mind. It's a fascinating story. Check it out, leave your comments, ding the bell, share it with your friends, and subscribe to our channel. So we were, uh, I was just talking with Elise uh, Hogue of, of NARAL about, you know, the, the, the patriarchy that emerged, the white patriarchy in the, in the 70s. Obviously, you know, the white patriarchy has been running this country since its inception. Um, in fact, women were not even allowed to vote until 1920, and African Americans, in theory, couldn't vote until, uh, you know, immediately after the Civil War. And to this day, in actual practice, African Americans have a very difficult time voting in many parts of the United States and Hispanics. Um, uh, so, you know, it was basically all about white people and, and white male power in this country. I mean, it's just, it's very simple. You know, you have to acknowledge that. But there's also a, a history of this. I haven't read Elise's book, so I don't know if she digs into this. Uh, the book just came out. But uh, I just finished writing a book that will be out next spring. It'll be out in about uh, seven months. And it's titled The Hidden History of Oligarchy and Tyranny in the United States and uh, chronicles the rise, the, the, the two times in the United States that oligarchy has risen up and tried to seize control of our federal government and was beaten back, and then how it's doing it again this f third time, uh, you know, using the vehicle of Donald Trump and the Republican Party. And one of the things, one of the things that I read when I was researching this book was a book by, by Russell Kirk called The Conservative Mind. He wrote this book back in 1951, and uh, it became, it was published in 50, 51, 52, 53. It was, there were several editions. Actually, it, he kept updating it all the way into the 1980s. He's now passed away. But in the conservative mind, this was the book that informed and awakened and, and created a movement, uh, the modern day conservative movement. This, this was the foundational book. This was the Bible, Russell Kirk's The Conservative Mind. This was the book my dad read you know, the year that I was born in 1951. This was, this was the book that Barry Goldwater read. This was the book that, that uh, William F. Buckley read that got him started. And so I went back and I read The Conservative Mind. And basically, uh, you know, he starts out, the first chapter of the book is actually about Burke, uh, you know, uh, Lord Burke, who, who uh, Sir Edmund Burke, who said, and I'm paraphrasing this, I'm, I'm quoting this from memory, so consider it a paraphrase. Um, it does me no harm if a man as servile as a tallow maker or hairdresser, candle maker or hairdresser, is allowed to uh, work. But it does society considerable violence if such a man is allowed to vote. Uh, that was Russell Kirk. He is considered the founder of the modern conservative movement. He was a British um, uh, politician and, and thinker. And, and very, very rich guy back in the 1770s. Thomas Paine took a boat to, to uh, Europe, uh, to England first. He was on his way to the French Revolution in the 1790s because he thought, oh, the French Revolution, this is cool. I'd like to see how that's working out. And uh, of course, when he got to France, ultimately he got arrested and had to be bailed out of France by James Monroe, but that's a whole other story. Um, but uh, when, Kirk, when, uh, when, uh, he, when Thomas Paine arrived in England, he spent two weeks in Russell, in, in, excuse me, in, uh, in uh, Lord, uh, what's his name's home, and uh, Burke, Sir Edmund Burke's home, and had this knockdown, drag out, two week long debate with Burke. And out of that, Thomas Paine wrote a book called The Rights of Man, which was a rebuttal to Burke. Okay, so a little history here. So Russell, uh, Russell Kirk, in 1951, writes this book, The Conservative Mind, and the first third of the book is all about Sir Edmund Burke and how what a brilliant thought, think, thought leader, and this is, these are the roots of the conservative movement. And then Kirk, keep in mind, this was 1951, and then Kirk gets into this rant, essentially, about how if women ever acquire political power, substantial political power, they will start demanding equal power in the workplace with men. If the middle class gets large enough and wealthy enough, he was arguing against unionization and against good wages for unionized workers. If they get rich enough, the middle class will start demanding political power. They pretty much did not have it in 1951, the working class. and. If their children have 
you know, continue to have free college education because at that point in time, college was free in California. It was free all over the United States and many, many places. There were colleges in New York. There were colleges in Michigan. You know, uh, you could go to college for, for very, very little money in 1951. And uh, both my parents went to college, and they were both dead broke. And Kirk said, if they ever get essentially free college education, if this continues, you're going to have students protesting. And, you know, everybody thought this was kind of a crackpot book. Uh, not the conservatives, the movement conservatives, but everybody else through the 50s. And then in 61, the birth control pill was legalized, and the sexual revolution got kicked off. And women started saying, well, now that I can control my reproduction, I'd like to be in the workplace and have equal pay and equal power. And then, you know, the abortion decision and then hippies and then the anti-war movement. And at that point, the entire Republican Party and all these conservatives went back and started reading Russell Kirk again and said, holy crap, exactly what he predicted is coming true. This is the end of the republic because Kirk in the conservative mind basically said, when this happens, when women get power and start demanding the right to an abortion, when, when uh, students start uh, rebelling against their elders, when women want power in the workplace, when minorities, African Americans and, and Hispanics start, start demanding political power and the right to vote, when those things happen, socialism is right around the corner. We are gonna, it will turn America into Cuba. That was essentially Kirk's prediction. And in the, in the 60s, when the hippies happened and the anti-war movement happened, all these Republicans were like, holy crap, he was right. This is the end of the republic. And that's where the Powell Memo in 1971 came from. That's where the Heritage Foundation and, the, and all these other think tanks that now animate America came from. That's where you know, Limbaugh and the whole right-wing radio movement came from. And at its core, as Elise was pointing out, was... White men are losing their power. Or, let's say it more correctly, power is being equally distributed across the United States, regardless of race or gender. That was intolerable to those people.